All right, so we've made it quite a long way here. We've gotten past the hurdle of the vacuum distillation, which I was a little bit worried about. It was rocky, but we got it done. Now moving forward, we're gonna to have to brominate our product and then perform a Diels Alder reaction to sort of warp that molecule into something that we're actually gonna start to form in the cube, really. We're gonna form the, uh, the cage. So this is where we're going to deviate from publicly available synthesis, um, the information that's currently out there, what other people are doing, we're going to be deviating from that. We're actually going to be doing the bromination and deals all their step in one. Um, however, it is a 40 hour procedure. So we'll be brominating and then stirring for 20 hours and then we'll do a methanolic uh, sodium hydroxide addition. And we will have to reflux that for 20 hours. So it's 40 hours in total. So that would be the reason between the last video and this video's gap, because it takes a really long time. So let's get into it and see what we can do. Okay, we are slowly dripping some bromine into our dioxane ketel mix. We're trying to maintain temperatures between 10 and 15. Play it on the safe side. It's an exothermic process. You can see it going up there. I have it just barely... I, I can't even see it in person, so that you can see it on camera, but it's like... I basically just have the tiniest little opening so bromine can kind of do its bromine thing and just sneak on through a little bit at a time. The uh, adjustments on my addition funnel are not amazing, so it's kind of tedious, but we're getting it done. We're about 10-15 minutes in. Uh, expecting about two hours for this process. We are into this about an hour. Had some issues with some bromine freezing on the way down. This thing isn't tall enough for the addition funnel to be right on the top. So I made some adjustments. Turned up the stirring. Got that all figured out. So a little over halfway done, I would say. We are done with brominating our product. She looks pretty good. A little accident over there. That's okay. That's what the thing is for. And it did its job pretty well. It, uh, this top layer seems to have not agreed 
with the bromine mixture that looks like some type of plastic, but the bottom layer is holding nice and strong, that black layer, so I'm glad that, I'm glad that actually happened just so I could kind of test the resistance of this damn thing. So now what we're going to do is stir at room temperature for 20-24 hours and then why I have this in such a big flask is we're going to add a bunch of um, what is it? sodium hydroxide and methanol and then we will reflux for another 20 or 24 hours. So long process for this step but we're kind of doing two in one. This is the first step, tomorrow is the second step. So. So we've gone a lovely black color. We have completed the addition of the methanol, and now all that's left to do is reflux for 20 hours. Okay, we're a little bit into this. And she's pretty black, looking more like an abomination of God. I wouldn't say tar, but you know, like 98% of the way there. If I take the brightest flashlight that I owned, which is extremely bright, and shine it directly in here and look really carefully, there's a hint of brown in there. So, that's, that's our hint of hope. But the good news is, we won't even find out if this worked for another 18 hours. So, that that'll be fun um <clears throat> i also got a i shoot all of my videos on a gopro 10 and i got a microphone for that so if you can notice the difference let me know in the comments below okay we have made massive strides on this photo reactor and my door is being propped up by a pan right now so ignore that but uh yeah, this is what it looks like. It's all wired up, except for the 310 nanometer LEDs, which is, those are the ones that we really want. That's what we're gonna be running the reaction with. Just finishing up the back here a little bit, but two coolers with CPU coolers, or two uh, Peltier modules with CPU coolers. And inside, so far, <laughs> I just started it and it was at 65 degrees. Um, I don't know what the bottom number is because it's 38 degrees is definitely not 65 Celsius. But it's nice and cool in here. And you can see number one is the 254 nanometer light underneath there very difficult to see it's a mercury vapor lamp and you can't see 254 anyway so 310 will be here and then 365 so there's that right there that's one of the TLC viewers 
and then 395, and that one's obviously a lot more visible. So after a little bit of cleanup work and the 310s, she'll be set to go. Then some hinges for the door, obviously. We'll be good to go. All right, here we are 20 hours later. Shutting it down. Hopefully we didn't just waste a bunch of time and hopefully we've got uh, some product in there. All right, well that bromination went beautifully and we had some really nice products, but then we totally cooked it and, and completely ruined it in our second step. And I had my suspicions as to why. Um, however, another gap, another reason for the gap between the last video and this one is I emailed the authors of the paper that I'm actually following, which is from 2020, which I'll link in the description. It's freely available, which is really nice uh, compared to the 1989 paper where I had to jump through serious hoops to get it without paying like 50 bucks. So I emailed him, um, and the misconception there is because after you brominate it at under 30 degrees, because if you go over 30 degrees, you'll ruin it, uh, you bring it to room temperature and stir it for 20 hours. However, we did not cool it back down and added the methanolic uh, sodium hydroxide solution right away and the temperature fluctuated between 55 and 60 degrees Celsius that entire time. Um, and we turned quite black, made a lot of really, really high grade tar. However, I refluxed it for 20 hours um, just in case anyway. Um, it, it really wasn't too, it was more of a passive procedure. I was able to keep a good eye on it that whole time. So when we got to attempting to precipitate out our product, that did not work very well. Uh, basically what we got was a bunch of very, very fine particles of tar and it actually clogged my vacuum filter and I'm still trying to clean it out. <laughs> so it was, it was very annoying. Um, the paper states to, it, it doesn't state a uh, degree threshold during the methanolic sodium hydroxide addition and I, I was suspicious of that after, of course, we ruined our, our reaction. Um, so I emailed the author and yes, they did not let it go above 15 to 20 degrees Celsius during that step. So we are going to take a back step a little bit. Um, I thought I was gonna have to go like all the way back to forming the key towel and stuff. So I actually immediately started a reflux of the PTSA and the cyclopendinone and the uh, uh, ethylene glycol. However, upon doing that, I realized that I only used half of my ketal. So I'm going to have to make some more dioxane. I'll do that tonight. I'm going to have to make some more bromine. Um, I've been learning a lot about that process, so I'll be a lot better at making the bromine. Um, and then we can go ahead and try again everything else I have, uh, you know, well in stock, the methanol, the sodium hydroxide, all that stuff. So, and now that we know a proper way to do it, uh, we should be successful this time. In the meantime, I'm gonna work on the photoreactor and continue to get that all set. That's nearly done. I'm just waiting on the 310 nanometer LEDs. They should be here any day. And in the next episode, I likely won't uh, refilm what we've already filmed. I'll probably start in with precipitating out the product and then we'll go into the next step, which is quite easy. We're gonna do a full D protection, um, unlike Tom from Explosions and Fire, who's doing a mono ketel, we're gonna fully deprotect our molecule because we're gonna, uh, like I said, at, at this point we have strayed away from kind of what uh, other people are doing and we're following uh, more of a newer procedure from 2020 and just speculation as well. So we'll take a different path um, so that should be exciting. The step after the deal's alder, it's just sulfuric acid. It's not going to be that hard. And then we have our photoreactor step, which I'm quite confident about I'm doing a lot of research on it. And I think I have it down. I'm going to be turning it into a flow reactor as well. So I bought a peristaltic pump and FEP tubing for the UV light to pass through. 
I think it's going to work out really well. So stay tuned, like and subscribe if you like what you see, and we'll see you guys later.